Is it on? Okay. Uh, good evening, Madam Chairman and members of the Senate Committee. Um, my name is Attorney Maria Piero Fizarro, and I am an attorney in private practice for the last 11 years here in the state of Rhode Island. And I'm here uh, tonight uh, to give a legal analysis um, in opposition of the bill that is before you today. Um, you may have been provided with a memo that is from Attorney Paul Linton, um, which is basically is an excellent memo which outlines um, the reason that we are in opposition, and this is something that we, all three of us, agree with this legal analysis. And um, in my testimony, I'm going to be pointing out and summarizing certain points and hopefully further explaining uh, what he's saying um, in that memo. So the opposing side will have you believe um, that this bill is somehow more restrictive than the original uh, H5125 bill that was introduced. Um, however, uh, this, and that they're also saying that it simply codifies Roe versus Wade and codifies current Rhode Island law. Um, I'm here, again, with my um, brother and sister attorney to show you that, legally speaking, there is nothing further from the truth. This bill would allow abortions in the third trimester through their moment of birth. The bill writers attempted to add language that appears to restrict the late-term abortions. So specifically in section D, where it says, I won't read the whole thing, but it says towards the end, when necessary in the, quote, medical judgment of a physician to preserve the life or health of that individual. So it appears, right, there's an exception there, or prohibition. However, the problem is uh, there's no definition for the word health. Uh, and this has actually been uh, done in other states, so, and you can see where the issue lies. Um, without, a, without parameters, a definition, a um, set of rules as to what health means, uh, basically you are deferring to the discretion of a non, uh, it's non-restricted and su uh, subjective judgment of the medical health provider, the abortionist, the one who's getting paid right, to do this, is going to be the one who's going to decide. Maria, is yes. that defined in Doe versus Bolton? Health, one of the progeny of Roe, that the health is is that defined in subsequent? I, my understanding is that that's defined in subsequent case law. Um, there is language, I believe, in Doe versus Bolton, but in this specific bill, it doesn't specify if this is what we, you know, doesn't um, actually tell us. Um, it actually does leave it to the medical provider. Um, anything further? No, okay. Um, Sorry, I apologize for no. For that's okay. I just yeah, that's thought. okay. I would have forgotten, um, frankly, if I didn't. Have. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, what this leads to is that without having parameters or explaining, it also includes mental health. So what we have seen is that when mental health is included or not excluded, I should say, then it's really um, leaves it wide open without necessarily a prohibition. So this is what I was leading to, um, even though it might appear to be one. Um, just to, so basically to give you a couple examples, um, pre Roe versus Wade uh, in the state of California, there was a standard that if a woman for mental health reasons could have an abortion, if she um, basically met the level of a civil commitment. So this is basically someone that she could show, they could show that she would pose a danger to herself or to others, which is a very high standard. But yet that year, 60,000 abortions were performed due to this alleged mental health standard, even though it was so high. So we're sitting here wondering, do you really believe that 60,000 women met this high commitment standard at that time? To just show us how this leaves it open, especially um, open to be abused by the doctors um, to basically say, well, all this is just a mental health condition and let it go, even though that was such a high standard. Here in Rhode Island, according to this bill, if this passed, there is no standard uh, listed in there or any rule, any definition for that matter. In a recent example, um, in the state of Kansas, uh, they uh, had passed a law, and there was actually a standard, again, it was even, they actually attempted to define it, saying that it was substantial and irreversible impairment of a major physical and mental function. So that sounds like they gave parameters to the doctor there, some kind of definition. But there was reportedly a case in 2012 uh, where the late-term abortionist Tiller uh, was found to have provided late-term abortions to uh, teens um, and the reason cited was for, quote, being anxious uh, over missing basketball practice or rodeo competition or because they wanted to go to the prom. So this is extremely concerning um, because 
this is, shows a glimpse of what could easily be lying ahead here in Rhode Island. Again, they actually had a definition listed there, um, but yet it was still um, gone beyond that and abused and by the doctors in that situation. And these type of things were occurring and are occurring at this time, really frankly. But, um, and interestingly, those girls were not referred to a psychiatrist, or again, reportedly, uh, to a psychiatrist or, or psychologist despite having um, supposed a mental health issue. So that just goes to show, you know, they're really concerned with the mental health of these women or just to have um, the abortion performed. Um, and I just want to stop here to note because I think it's interesting that this uh, purports to help women um, and protect them, you know, from if they're having a mental health issue during this time to allow late term abortion. Um, but does the doctor consider in that situation, or this law for that matter, or public policy, um, consider the uh, woman's mental health after she has this abortion? Do they consider what it, would, what it could do to her? Um, has anyone really looked into, I think it's really just ignored um, by the opposition, but as far as really in general, we don't hear a lot about PSCD, uh, what happens, especially late term abortion. How, what, what kind of effect could this have on these women? Has anyone thought of that? This is real and it exists. And there's places like, um, Rachel's Vineyard, um, there is the Silent No More campaign where thousands and thousands of women have poured out um, with their testimony and what this has done to them. So why are we invoking a public policy which leads women to despair? Why are we not invoking public policy which, which will inspire hope? Why are we not um, you know, uh, funding or um, promoting or celebrating centers like uh, the Little Flower Home, which houses women when um, you know, they have nowhere to go but they're pregnant, or like um, Mother of Life Center in Providence right here, or um, the, in my hometown, uh, we have the Deborah Felicaro uh, Pregnancy Center of Westerly. You know, why are we not funding these? Why are we not helping these women? Why aren't we truly loving, supporting, and truly being there for women, because that is what the definition of love is, that is to really help them during this time, not to promote killing their own child. And um, another point about this prohibition is that there is no criminal penalties listed for the doctor, which is troubling. Um, if he does not, uh, if he violates this, this um, alleged prohibition, um, you know, for post viability, there's no criminal uh, penalty and there's only professional discipline, but yet um, this is not even required, it's just permitted. So if a doctor violates this, there's a chance he could get a license for provoked, uh, revoked. So uh, what, is, what kind of deference effect does this have on the doctor or the abortionist to even follow this ban? I believe none really. So in sum, um, as I've just shown, the added language essentially meaningless and unenforceable. Um, it does not, in fact, regulate abortion any more than the original version of the bill that we had looked at. Uh, we believe that this language is just added in an attempt to appease a massive outcry in our state against late term abortion. And without definitive parameters defining what health means, it's just leaving the door wide open. Uh, to basically having an abortion for any reason up until the moment of birth, which could also result in infanticide. This is therefore absolutely no way simply codifying Roe versus Wade, but it overreaches and goes well beyond Roe versus Wade. Um, just a few other points that I will touch on is the um, impact of, I, I know this was actually already discussed, uh, of the methods of abortion, which is, um, uh, the partial birth abortion ban, uh, excuse me, law would be repealed. And the current law in Rhode Island states that partial birth abortions prohibit except to save the life of the mother. Um, so by repealing this, this does not codify the Rhode Island laws. Um, and what this would effectively do is allow basically any method at any time of an abortion. So if let's say there's two equally safe procedures for um, a, a mother who's having um, an abortion, uh, basically, or if they're having an issue, um, and the doctor either could choose between um, inducing labor or dismemberment, um, the doctor could, just for no reason at all, choose the second, the latter, dismemberment, uh, just because he feels like it. So there's no parameters, restrictions saying, you know, we should choose the one that's safer, healthier, that could possibly save this child in the end. 
And I just wanted to point out here as well um, that in Gonzalez versus Carhartt, um, this was a federal case and actually indicates that a law that we currently have in our books, that partial birth abortion be prohibited except to save the life of the mother, uh, a law like that was, uh, a federal law was upheld and passed constitutional muster. So that shows us that in Rhode Island, if we wanted to keep this law, we likely could, and we could also, it shows that, see how that's a very specific, it says prohibited, except to see life, very specific definition. That means that, you know, if time was taken, um, you know, and there could be a well thought out law with, you know, definitions, clear prohibitions, uh, thoroughly researched, thoughtfully addressed, and, um, without any ambiguity, without leaving us with doubt, and this type of law would likely uh, survive, according to, again, the Gonzalez case, and would pass constitutional muster here in Rhode Island, and also would stay in line with our current law. But rather, it appears um, that there's this, there's rush, um, basically, to seize the moment um, of, of what this, this false, um, uh, uh, idea that if this law doesn't pass right away, right now, um, they know there's going to be uh, something basically that the Roe versus Wade would be overturned or something major is going to happen that we have really no indication of at this time. So basically it appears that they just added on this uh, additional um, section D uh, just to try to appease and appear uh, that they covered uh, third term, excuse me, uh, late term abortion in the third trimester, but in fact it really does not. Um, and finally, um, there's the impact on parental consent, which again, that was also discussed and that does go beyond constitutional uh, Roe versus Wade or any type of constitutional um, uh, law, which we just believe is absolutely outrageous that um, aside from a parent, a um, sibling, an older sibling or a grandparent um, could make a decision. And this is, this is someone uh, who basically has uh, no say over this child. This child was cared for um, and had custody from a parent their entire life, um, and then they can basically just bypass them and go to an older sibling. So just imagine for those who have children what this means. Um, and the last thing is the quick child statute being repealed. This was actually added to this bill, we noticed. In the last bill of 5125, this was not included. Um, what this does, it actually would um, take away the only law that we have in Rhode Island um, that would protect a, uh, if a woman was pregnant and um, she was killed or she was assaulted and the baby dies, uh, this law would protect uh, or give some type of consequence to the person who kills the child in the womb. And just to give an example of where this could lead us, uh, recently in New York, reportedly, a pregnant woman was stabbed to death. She was stabbed in the stomach many times. And uh, thanks to the new recently passed New York so-called Reproductive Health Care Act, there will be no consequence to the murderer of that child. So that's just a preview of what could be lying ahead for us. So I just want to end with saying, sorry, I know probably went past my time, but... Okay. Long, and I'm yeah, so doing so. my best to be okay, as, okay. as I'm gonna accommodating end as possible. Oh, okay. It's early. Okay. So I just want to say, I believe this is the biggest human rights issue of our time. And I know it's, it's interesting because I heard the flip side said here um, from the opposing side, but actually uh, we believe this is the biggest human rights issue of our time. And looking back from years from now, we're just going to say, what in the world were we thinking? You know, it's just, we believe it's just pure insanity. And just ask you, what side of history do you want to be on? Thank you.